Well, good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Tuesday, December 7th, 2021. And our top story is today, is your real estate agent really your agent? And investing in real estate in your IRA. Well, joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Deidre Woolard with The Motley Fool. Deidre, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's always great to talk all aspects of real estate. And, and we talk all about a little bit more than that as well. Going, Getting back into the office, COVID, you name it, you kind of cover it all. You're jack of all trades too. Uh, let's talk about hiring that real estate agent. And what are some things that people need to know about? You're thinking about buying a house. You're thinking about selling a house. What do you, No matter where you live, what are some common rules of thumb that you should follow? I think it's really interesting right now because there are more real estate agents in the country than there are houses for sale at this point. So there's a lot of competition with individual agents to to get that listing or to uh, or to help you find a house. And so there's a lot of competition. One of the things we tell people is, you know, interview people. Don't go with your first choice. You know, really talk to other people who may have bought or sold a house in the past, get a good referral, things like that. It, it's really important to know the real estate agent, know their track record and and have that level of trust because they are going to be your fiduciary in this transaction. Is there a code of ethics? Like, so I come, the, as you know, I come from the financial services world where mm -hmm. I was licensed by FINRA and I had to follow a certain code of ethics. And if I didn't, I didn't just get slapped on the wrist. I got thrown in jail. I mean, it never happened to me. But there have been plenty of cases. But is there a code of ethics that realtors need to follow once they're licensed? There's actually multiple codes of ethics. And one of the things that's uh, interesting that people get confused is realtors and real estate agents, not quite the same thing. Uh, real estate agent, you're generally licensed by the state, whereas uh, joining the National Association of Realtors is uh, is a separate thing. National Association of Realtors absolutely has a code of ethics, and there are also individual licensing agencies in the state. Requirements vary by state, but there's usually an educational requirement, and also you have to test in, and there are absolutely all sorts of fines and uh, and other penalties for violating the rules of being of real estate in your state. Well, let's, fo let's follow through. If I'm doing due diligence and say I'm looking for a realtor to help my wife and I find a home here in the Charlotte area, be a little selfish here because we are kind of looking around. What type of paperwork do I need to file with that broker? Do I just, is it a handshake? Is it um, uh, some type of uh, application that I have to provide to that person so that we, we can do business? Well, the first thing for anyone who's looking for a house is to really start thinking about the loan before you start start thinking about the house. If you if you're using a loan, of course, you know, get pre-approved. Start thinking about that aspect first. One of the things that I think is interesting about real estate is that people will spend a lot of time looking for a house. They will spend not very much time looking for a loan. And really, you're going to have both the house and the loan for the same amount of time. So really focus on that as well. And the other thing to keep in mind is the rules of the buyer's agent. There's a thing that's happening right now that's really interesting, which is the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, and the Department of Justice originally had a deal uh, regarding the, uh, the ways that buyer's agent commission is disclosed. And that deal ended up, the, the DOJ exited that deal partly because they want to continue to do uh, more uh, more investigation about this. But the bottom line is that the Department of Justice felt that it was unclear in the ways that buyer's agent commission is displayed and, and talked about because a lot of people who are buying a house, they think that the buyer's agent is free. And that's not the case at all. <laughs> You're shaking your head, you know. No free but lunch that, here. Nope, no, no free, free lunch. lunch. 
but that's a big issue is that 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 is a common misconception. And also the other issue is that sometimes because it is a commission split, you get the uh, the, the buyer's agent commission comes from the sale and comes from the commission that's paid and then split in half, it isn't always a 50-50 split. And in some cases, in the individual MLSs, in the agent remarks, uh, you'll see something uh, that says, you know, the buyer's agent commission is 1.5% instead of like maybe 2% or something like that. So there's this concern that buyer's agents may not show all of the houses if they're going to get a lower commission. And so that's one of the things that that the NAR is trying to address. Yeah, and, and you started off the conversation with, I, I love this word, the word fiduciary. And just like in the financial services world with advisors, not everyone is a fiduciary, Deidre. And you need to be aware of that. When you are shaking hands and, and before you, like you said, before you get approved on that loan, before you go out looking for a house, you want to make sure the interests of this person that is showing you the house and you are properly aligned. Well, and the other thing is too, is that you don't necessarily have to sign a contract to work with a buyer's agent. A lot of buyer's agents don't make you sign a contract right away, but once you do sign that contract, they are acting as your fiduciary. Yeah, really good information. We could do a whole show, and I think we're gonna do a whole yes. show on this <laughs> at some point. But Deidre, I need to take a quick break. Can we come back? Interested in investing in real estate in your self-directed IRA? We're gonna find out how to do that and a lot more things you need to consider. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We wanna make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-504-8194. Welcome back. We're talking this morning with Deidre Woolard of The Motley Fool. Deidre, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Glad to be here. All right, let's shift gears from buying a home, getting a mortgage, finding an agent. Let's talk about if I want to invest in real estate in my retirement account. All right, Deidre, this, this sounds very complex to me, but a lot of people, you can buy real estate in the form of a REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, which you and I have talked about, or you can mm -hmm. buy actual property. How does one go about buying real estate in an IRA? Yeah, so if you're just doing REITs, you can absolutely hold it in a traditional IRA or Roth IRA. But if you want to buy real estate and have that cash flow be tax protected, you have to do a thing called a self-directed IRA. So a self-directed IRA, basically, it's self-directed, which means that you can take you can invest in things beyond 
the uh, traditional stock market, mutual funds, ETFs, things like that. So it opens up the possibilities, uh, not just real estate, but but other other uh, alternative assets as well. And so that's why it's appealing to people. But there are a lot of rules and a fair amount of fees involved. So it's it's not necessarily for everyone. I would think a lot of complexity, just in talking with you over the last few years, there's a lot of complexity in thinking about investing in real estate. It's not something where you can just watch Home and Garden TV. Big shout out to them. Maybe they'll be a sponsor, by the way, of BRN, but uh, or have us on their platform. But, but there's a lot to consider. You have to think about uh, the, the mortgage. You have to think about mortgage payments. You have to think about the, uh, the, rental, uh, the rental money that you would own. So uh, receive. So there's a lot that you have to unpack before even jumping in. Right. So you can't use an SDRA for your vacation house, your primary residence. It's really for real estate investments. And the other thing to know about an SDRA is that you have to have a custodian. So you have to have a company involved in it with you. And there are a lot of rules to follow. It's easy to, to sort of get off track with it. It's it, that's one of the reasons it's sort of more of an advanced financial instrument. But it's really interesting to people because you can hold a lot of things in it. One thing that people are interested in right now is that you can't actually hold cryptocurrency inside an SDIRA. It's complicated. It's a little risky, but it is an option if that's a direction you want to go in. And we've heard of non-fungible tokens. That's another one we talked mm -hmm. about. So that's probably another one. Art, gold. Are there financial advisors or agents that are specifically um, knowledgeable in this type of investment? Like, could I go out and search the, I was going to say the Yellow Pages, but let's say Google, because <laughs> I don't think the Yellow Pages really, you don't physically get the Yellow Pages anymore, but can you go out and search for someone who really understands this, um, the infrastructure around a self-directed IRA? Yeah, this is not something that every company does. And so you actually have to find a company that specializes in SDRAs. And like anything else, you may want to look at a couple of companies because like anything else, the fees can be structured very differently. So you want to make sure that you understand what you're getting into, where they take their fees. And, and also, you want to know that someone really understands the rules because there are things that you can't hold in an SDIRA. You can't hold life insurance. You can't hold collectibles. Uh, you can't hold um, jewelry, things like that. So there's a bunch of things that you can't hold that are investments that aren't eligible to be in an SDIRA. So those Beanie Babies that I bought in the late 90s, they, they could not be, they're not probably not even collectibles anymore, but I couldn't hold them in an IRA, self-directed IRA? No, collectibles are, are not allowed. Okay, maybe my baseball cards. Uh, so let, let, last question here, and, and with any alternative asset, and especially real estate, you have to value it. And I think that's probably why you were remarking that a custodian has to actually hold the underlying asset because they have to, under some period of time, value the asset. So whether it's private markets, whether it is uh, real estate, gold coins, something, they have to be able to figure out what the value of it is worth as of quarter end. That is absolutely another uh, level of complexity in an SDIRA is that you absolutely have to report on the value. And certainly right now with real estate, that, that value has been uh, dramatically increasing over the past couple of years. Yeah, well, it's complex. People really need to, to, to do research, read about it. It's not all like a home and garden television show. Those are great programs, but they're actually for entertainment and a little bit of knowledge as well. Deidre Willard, always great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program. And we look forward to having you back again very soon. Thank you. Happy holidays. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, somebody you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives or see our latest content? Check out our partners, our streaming partners, I should say, Roku, Amazon, and over a hundred more. We're back again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes.
Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.